Uh, there's one more thing. Uh, I want to get one, one more philosophical thing, and I might not put this in the video, okay. but, but so you know, I, I posit this this theory that you know, life is this progression of information systems that has evolved over time. Okay. Right. That initially, that uh, information was stored in genetic material, mm -hmm. which was very firm mm -hmm. and uh, translates into yeah. um, when as brains evolve, then you have a new information medium yeah. with which uh, yeah. information can thrive. Yeah. Memes come after that, which is a communication of yeah. individuals between the, the populations, mm -hmm. and then technology arises because of this. Each yeah. one is dependent on the other. Yeah. Um, technology has afforded us the ability to write information into non-biological systems, yeah. you know, which is, has been huge for humanity. Yeah. Because now yeah. we can store information indefinitely about anything that we well, want. Well, we can also communicate it uh, broadly. Yes, uh, yeah, with the internet, you know, yeah. it's another big, big deal yeah. you know, for as far as communication. So now we're sort of faced with this problem where data is everywhere and we're writing information on non-biological systems everywhere mm -hmm. and we don't have any we don't have enough collective biological processing power or technological processing power to, to understand any of it so when we do create these systems that are able to understand our world better mm -hmm. uh, you know a more general type of artificial intelligence what is that? What's the next step in that you know evolution of information? What what happens then? I'm just I'm interested in your opinion. Your very very yeah. philosophical opinion about this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, my answer may seem a little strange. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, this gets we're really getting off the deep end, right? So make sure everyone has a couple glasses of wine. <laughs> um, uh, you know, you, you ask the point: What's the purpose of life? Mm -hmm. Right. That's a part of this, yeah. yeah so, what, you know, why? What's the point of all this? And you know, what what makes our species unique, of course, is that we do create knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, we the only species that have embodied a, a model of the universe. In we something don't just else. understand the world. Well, we we, 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 we model the world. We're the only species that models the world beyond our immediate environments. Yeah. We know physics. We know we know the only species that know there's planets and there's yeah. you know, and, um, we only, you know, we're the only species that knows what exists on other parts of the planet, mm -hmm. um, right? So, and that's uh, really just been recently. Yeah, it's pretty recent. <laughs> well, so we have a system, as you point, we have a system for discovering the structure of the world, mm -hmm. and because of um, of communications and tool building, we're now able to discover the structure of things we've never experienced directly. Yeah. Um, so we are. We anyway, the product of our species that's unique is knowledge. Yes. That, that's that's right. really the and knowledge can be expressed as. Uh, an understanding or an internal model of an external system. Mm -hmm. So I have an internal model of physics and the laws of physics. Our internal and, model and what? technology allowed us to share that knowledge. Technology allowed us to share that knowledge. Well, that's a secondary issue, in my point. But okay. uh, but what we've done uniquely is knowledge. And so um, uh, you might ask this: well, What's the point of our species? Uh, you know, what are we living for? Um, where do we want to go? You know, maybe someday we'll be gone. Or we'll certainly, we'll be gone someday. And. Um, uh, what are we leaving behind? And I think the answer is we, we're leaving behind knowledge. We, our goal should be to collect knowledge, mm -hmm. to um, make it available not only to other people on the planet, but to actually maybe some people who come along after we're gone. Yeah. Um, and you know, the fact that we lived is interesting, but not that interesting. You know, dinosaurs lived, platypuses lived, you know, yeah. I was reading a great story about the woolly mammoth, they lived, died recently, <laughs> um, <laughs> in Atlanta today. Um, but um, but only we have created knowledge, and so you know if you want to ask you know I, if you want to get very philosophical here, I would say you know the purpose of you know the only purpose I can think about why we should really care is that we should be trying to get more knowledge. Mm -hmm. We're trying to preserve it in some way that future generations of inhabitants of Earth or future life life general. elsewhere or maybe we transmit it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But knowledge is the thing that matters more than anything else. It's the that's the only common goal we can have. Um, beyond just mere existence, like a making sense of the world. And yeah, even if we don't, it. even if we don't have a sense for why it matters. Yeah, that seems to be something that's important it, in and of itself. In and of itself, at least it gives us the opportunity of being important and in the future. We humans do seem to have an internal drive yeah. to do this. Yeah, yeah. but it's a, it's a, and so what you can think about the brain. I'll, I'll wrap it up with this. You can think about the brain. The brain has discovered a system for extracting a model of the world through interaction with it, mm -hmm. and we that's that's what we were talking about it's basically that is core what's going on now you say well learning about the shape of a coffee cup what does that have to do with anything the same mechanism for learning the features of a coffee cup in three-dimensional space 
can be used to learn the features of mathematical properties in an n-dimensional space. Ideas. And ideas in, in, in spaces that are not physical spaces, but you might still, say a, we're modeling an object, it could be a coffee cup, yeah, it could be a concept. A concept, and, and one of the things I've learned through this, this recent work is that all, all features, if you will, I want to call them that, all sort of, some sort of measured quantity in the world has to be, in our brains, has to be put in the context of an, of a, uh, an allocentric uh, framework. Right. And so it doesn't have to be a three-dimensional framework. Well, if you're going to share it, it sort of has to be allocentric, right? I mean, you have to be able um, to express it in a way. Maybe, that yes. It's it, independent of my, to my body. Yes. But it also means that knowledge, all knowledge is location. So it's hard to, it, it's hard to even put our minds around this a bit, but it, the structure tells me this. It says, well, that's going to be its way well, to work. Yeah. So, so, you know, often when you, um, when you have a discovery of something, uh, and you're trying to work on some problem, a scientific problem, and, and the answer comes to you, what's I love, going on? I love that feeling. Yeah, it's, it doesn't happen very often, but it's great. Um, I had a real aha moment when we came up with this basic idea. Yeah. Um, I remember it very distinctly. Um, but um, uh, what, what you're doing is you're, you're sort of discovering multiple things at once. You're discovering what the shape of the thing is in some right. n-dimensional yeah, structure. It's the, the epiphany. Yeah, it's like all, all of a sudden the, all the features, locations settle into some high dimensional structure that is copacetic and all of a sudden everything's predicting correctly. Right, right. And, uh, and then you say, even oh. at a conceptual level. Yeah, it's just, well, just the same mechanism. Yeah. It's just basically saying, oh, I, I now have, have a model of this object. I know it's, I have it's, it's where the features are in some space I didn't understand before. And, and, uh, now, and now together. it's a predict, it's all fitting together. Everything is, everything's predicting properly and bingo, it's all working. Um, so I think that the general nature of knowledge, even very abstract knowledge, um, fits in this framework. It has to. This is all we got. This is the brain. These mo these mechanisms we were talking about earlier. Or it's all there is. I mean, we haven't talked about attention. We haven't talked about motors. Other things, but it's part of. This is part of that. This is a key part of it. Um, so anyway, that's um, that's kind of cool to think about. Well, that's a fun place to wrap it. Yeah, up. we can wrap it up there. So thanks a lot right. for talking to me. That was fun. I hope this uh, wasn't too crazy. No, no, I really enjoyed it, yeah. and I hope everybody watching wow. uh, appreciates uh, this. Uh, yeah. A uh, big thank you to you for sharing. No problem. We're always happy to do it, and uh, look forward to the paper coming out because that'll, be, that'll be precise. That'll be detailed. That'll be you know testable. Right. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. Okay. That went on launch. Yeah. Well, I knew it. Great. Great. Oh, you're just too. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I know.